DIY by Dar, and this is Thrift Flips number four. I'm going to do an IKEA tray, a charging plate, some faux planters, and two pictures. And we are going to flip these in the arty way. Here is the IKEA tray. And first off, I am going to need to apply two coats of slick stick, front and back. The next is going to be some silk all-in-one paint in the color Baja Gray. Once again, two coats on each side. Then I got out my IOD transfers. I did want to put a transfer on and I started looking through them to decide which one I thought really went with this piece. And when I got to this one, I thought, yep, that's the one. Looks pretty good on there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out and cut it out. And we are going to get this on the tray. When you peel that back off, it is going to be sticky. And when they're big like this, they're a little bit hard to manage. So you make sure you get it where you want because once that touches down, you are committed to where you set it because you will not be able to pick it back up and move it. Use your burnishing stick and go ahead and start transferring that to your piece nice and slow and you burnish it down and if it does not transfer put that paper back down and burnish a little bit more I went up into the corner and I will warn you don't hit that corner real real hard or what you will end up doing is you're gonna split your transfer if you do you just have to go back with some paint and paint over it Here is my really, really handy tool. It's called the thumbnail. I like this one a lot. And that's why I always have really big, gnarly looking thumbnails because I do use them a lot. I also cut that paper um, a bit so it's easier to pull back. If it's really big, it's kind of hard to manage. And I'm just kind of running my fingers down there on the other side to help that release and once it is down you can go ahead and just burnish it some more with your finger and rub it down make sure it is on there nice and firm my next project here was a picture frame that had six frames and I am going to add these embellishments that I made with some polyurethane resin I tried a new brand this Let's Re Resin brand, and it was a little more brittle. Um, it did have a few more bubbles, but all in all, it's okay. And this was the size right there, the pink one, that I needed. So it only needs like three mils. So mixing up three mils a bit hard. So I mixed up what I needed um, and then just made some other molds for the next piece that I'm going to be working on. So while I was wait, waiting for them to set up, I did start to apply the uh, molds to my frame. So you're gonna use some quick and thick and put those molds on there, press them down. If uh, you do happen to get any of the glue that does squish out, is just take a uh, paintbrush and then you can wipe that glue away with a little bit of water on the end of that paintbrush and then clean your paintbrush off. Two coats of Weeping Willow Dixie Bell chalk paint on the back. I am going to go ahead and put two coats of this on the front. Now you have to make sure you get these molds from every direction, top, bottom, side to side, and then go back and look in all them directions and make sure you have it completely covered. Sometimes they uh, miss spots when you have such intricate molds and you need to go back and hit it again. Mm -hmm. 
While that's drying, I'm taking the mat from the frame and I'm just going to give it a little look and see how it looks. And I'm liking it so far. Now I have some double card stock on the back of this mat opening and I am going to trace out where my pictures need to hit to show through on this frame. And when I cut these out, I'm going to cut them a little bit bigger than that drawn frame so I can uh, tape them on the back of that mat. Here are all my pictures. Um, I did get these from Timu. They're like $2.50 for a pack of 20 to 30. And I just want to set up the best ones with the coloring and the flower types so that it really looks cohesive and pretty. Now I'm going to set the picture back behind that matte frame because the pictures are a little bit bigger and I'm going to get it placed right where the optimal area is to show that flower the best and I am going to trace around it with a pencil very lightly because I need to cut the excess off which makes it easier to glue on my double cardstock. Um, I have a old... Uh, type cutter that you can cut these out with. Um, kind of comes down like a guillotine, I guess. So it always gives you really accurate, smooth cuttings. Then if there's any pencil marks left on my picture, I will just take the eraser and take them off. Comes off really easy. Ready to glue it down. I'm going to use my Elmer's glue stick and the color is purple, which I guess I like because then I can see where I've been uh, with the glue and of course it is going to dry clear. You can use a lot of different glues. Um, this is uh, acid free for pictures, for photos, for canvases. So I just prefer to use this because you don't have that real big mess um, like you do with other glues. So once that glue is on there I am going to set that picture in place on where I had my pencil drawing around it where it is going to show through on that frame and stick it down. I just set that on the top to see if I like it and I'm liking it. So next move, Dixie Bell Best Darn Wax in Brown. I need to put some of that on my molds because I want that character to come out in them and this is a water-based um, wax so it will uh, dry and then if you want to put protection over the top then you can go ahead and you can do that. Um, I'm just going to get the frame covered and then I'm going to wipe all of that back and give this frame a chance to dry. Now I did spray it because I'm putting this gilding wax on there. These are all water-based products and if you rub really hard, sometimes you're going to rub your paint off. So lightly sprayed it with a matte polycrylic and I am applying this Dixie Bell gilding wax in copper. Now this is an oil-based product. So after I do this, I do not have to seal this with anything else. When this cures, it will be on there and it will not come off. There's my tape on the back of my pictures to hold them in place. Here they are in the matted part of the frame. I'm liking it, looking pretty good. Set the um, frame over the top, looks really nice together. So all I have to do at this point is get the glass in there in the back end. And this project 
will be complete. On to the next one. These were some little candle holders from Dollar Tree and a candlestick that I had from a few hauls before and I wanted to paint these so first I needed to get some slick stick on them. So two coats of slick stick on everything before I painted with a chalk mineral paint from Dixie Bell in the color terracotta. I wanted to put some transfers on these and I found kind of a bold boho looking transfer set so I just cut it into small pieces because this was going to be a challenge um, to put these on and the best advice I can give you is go slow start at one end because you have all these curves and um, different circumferences and this is where that good old tool nail thumb comes in handy and take your time and just work it from one end to the other and where it falls it falls leave it where it lays i must say that this was probably the ugliest set of things that i've ever made i don't know what i was thinking I have some E6000 and I'm getting ready to glue the top parts onto these and I did, they, they were better if I flipped them over, they were sturdier and I am gluing on the glass portion of these two little succulent stands that I'm making. I let them dry overnight and I'm ready to go ahead and put some rocks in there and then stick my succulents in there where I like them and they're done on to the next one this frame I paid six dollars oh my god did it stink I had some repairs it was a poured plaster frame which I did not know so that picked up the odor big time I'm smelling it right now just looking at this picture this needed two heavy coats of boss from Dixie Bell, it is for odors and bleed through on both sides. And if this had any smell after I was completed with this step, this was going to have to just go right in the garbage because it was horrible. Here I come, ready for bed, let's sniff it. It's good. Now I'm going to paint this with some Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint in chocolate. It is going to get two coats on the front, two coats on the back. I wanted to make a stain, so I used caviar in Dixie Belle, a, a mineral paint, probably 50-50 with water. And I put that on because I wanted that to get down inside those cracks so you would be able to see that weaving a lot better and just let it soak down in there and I've got a really nice absorbent fluffy rag 
And the first thing that I want to do is just take that and rub it around the outside edge and the inside edge because you don't want to have any drips going down. And once that's completed, just taking that big fluffy rag and setting it on the top and just letting it soak it up kind of like a sponge before I go and just lightly wipe this over the top because I've got two water base and if you rub really hard you're you're going to rub your paint off. I needed a base for my canvas. I found an old box that was some really nice heavy cardboard paper and I drew around that to make a base for my canvas. I'm drawing on the inside because this is where my canvas needs to sit exactly. And there's my canvas, my cute little bees. Everything's matched up, it's cut out, it's ready to go. So I'm going to work on the frame. And I did a real light dry brush on this with some green because that picture had green in it. And that brown was just kind of overwhelming it. And I thought that that helped a bit. Then at this point, I did spray this frame um, before I did the Dixie Bell gilding wax in copper because all that water base that I have on there I'm taking a chance that it's going to rub off and I did copper on the outside edge. I'm ready to put the uh, canvas in so I am going to use my glue stick and make sure that I get this canvas good and covered on the back side all over and then I am lining it up with the pencil lines that I made to get this squared up so it is perfect. I'm going to just set that frame over the top there just to make sure before I really press that down and stick it good because if I have to shift it it's a lot easier to move or pick up and shift before you press it down good. And check it one more time I like how I wipe my hands off on my pants. That's a quick rag. I'm sure you guys all do that too. I don't want to get any glue on top of the canvas. It's looking good. It's lining up perfect. I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to press this down. You want to go straight down on top of it. Don't move it. Um, so press it down front ways, long ways, sideways. Then I will even take um, my roller here and roll it down just to give it that final help to make sure all that glue is kind of smooshed down and reach in every place. Now here is my charger plate. This was a really cool find. It's like from the 70s. It's vintage but you can see somebody um, it has a hanger on it and somebody already painted some black in it and it has some patina on it already. So uh, I didn't want to shine it up so I'm going to give it some faux patina. So I took some Dixie Bell paint in the color of the Gulf and I'm just going to lightly add that in different areas outside around the edge and then just brush it away with my finger, blend it in, down in some of them curves, and I just um, have a Q-tip, take a little bit back off. So when I got done, I really liked it, but you're going to have to spray it before you put your gilding wax on. Just spray that edge where you did the patina. Now I have some copper gilding wax. And remember, you're not going to have to spray this after this gilding wax because this is oil-based and it is going to dry and it is not going to move. Yeah. 
Now I have the E6000 and I am putting this glue around to set my happy little Easter bunny with his Easter eggs in the middle. And once that I have it lined up, I'm going to go look for something I can put on there and I found the perfect size weight and I will leave it for 24 hours. Okay, let's see what I ended up with for this fourth haul for my booth, which is getting pretty full, so some of it could go on my Etsy store. So the first thing that I have, um, and I showed before, was this candlestick, and it was silver, and I went ahead and just bohoed it up, and I paid $3 for this candlestick, and I did put some transfers on it and a little rope, and I am going to charge $8.95. Along with that, I found out that you can go to Dollar Tree and get some pretty neat things and make them up as well. So I just wanted to do some little succulents. So this was what I came up with. And I painted them just like the candlestick. And how this came out was $1.25, $1.25, twenty-five for the rocks that I split between the two. And then the succulents that I put in there were a couple dollars as well. So it came up to about $5 a piece for one of these. So I am going to sell this for $9.95. Oh, these were so cute. I just, I, I couldn't resist. These are from Timu, and they're just cute little, they're made out of plastic, and they came with the flowers, and they were $5 a piece. So I'm going to sell these for $9.95 in my booth. Oh, I think on one of my first hauls, um, I showed you guys this planter that I got for $1.99, and I was waiting for some plants to put inside, and this took me a little bit because I had to wait for pieces and parts on it, and how the breakdown went on this, I have five potted plants inside here and they are sitting on and also inside here are two uh, blocks of floral green so it was a dollar 25 each for the two blocks of the floral green a dollar 30 for each plant and then about two dollars for the moss and such that i put inside so what do i have in this i don't know but I'm going to price it at $28. I did find this really cool Ikea tray, and it's, it's pretty heavy duty. And I went ahead and I painted it up, and it is protected well. I put this gorgeous fern um, transfer on the front. So, it was missing something up in this little corner. So what I did was I found a little dragonfly that fit perfectly in there. And what I have in this fern tray is $4 for the tray and then whatever the transfers were, which was not a lot, and the painting, and it has good protection on it. I, got, I have really good protection on this surface. I am gonna put this tray in my booth or on my Etsy site for $24.95. Honor of the holiday, I found this lovely vintage, they call them plate chargers, for $3 at Goodwill. And the little bunny um, scene that came on a plate, um, I got that for three dollars um, so we're looking at about six dollars so I decided that I was going to go ahead and put this in my booth for twenty two dollars 
Okay, this lovely picture frame um, that I put all the embellishments around and then I went with all really um, decorative florals for the pictures on it. The pictures were from scrapbooking uh, supplies from Timu and I paid $2.25 for all the pictures and I, and I still have quite a few left to use. And then I painted the frame. And what do I got for this frame? I have about $7.25 in, in the supplies. But this one took me a little bit of a work because it was all done by hand. So I am going to go ahead and price this one at $34.95. And it is pretty neat. Pretty neat picture. Okay, here are my set of bees in this really neat frame that I purchased for $6, which was way too much when I got it home and I really got a chance to undo it and smell it because it was a poured plaster frame. So after redoing the whole frame and getting everything inside there, what I've got into this piece is about $8, $6 for the frame, $2 for the canvas print. So the work that went into it was a little bit much. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna price this in my booth for $32. So there is that one. Pretty neat. I like this one. I have a lot of fairy things in my booth. So I, I got these little fairies. They're just resin. I've already dropped one and broke it. But they were $3.99 a piece. Uh, so I'm going to put them in my booth by some of my fairy prints for $7.99 a piece. And the last thing is... I got another runner, which is a 13 by 72, and I already have eight of these uh, placemats in my booth. Took me a little bit to get the runner, but I have that now, and it was $2.99, and I will price this at $7.99. So that's the haul this time, guys. And what I've got coming up next are two uh, furniture makeovers. Um, the next one is going to be a challenge uh, with Flip Pop, Andy from Flip Pop. And it had to be anything blue. And then the next one after that is from my friend Corey um, at Desert DIY. And she's also having a challenge on doing a piece that you've wanted to do for a really long time. So that will be the next two weekends. On um, I'm not sure when the actual dates are, if they're on a Saturday or a Sunday. I think Andy's is on a Saturday, and I think Corey's is on a Sunday. So until the next one, guys, see you then.